outdoors, bucks and bass and beers. 3B Outdoors premier sponsors are Spot Hog, makers of serious archery products, and W.E. McConnell and Sons, high performance builders of high performance nationwide homes. Welcome back to another week here at 3B Outdoors. On this week's show, we're going back to the Buckeye State. We're going to be hunting whitetails with Richie Mason. Then we're going on a turkey hunt in Tennessee where Bucky Smith tries to get it done with a stick and string. After that, we're going to Southwest Virginia. We're going to be doing a little doe patrol with Clayton and Randy McDavid. Sit back and enjoy the show. I'm Freddie Neely and welcome to 3B Outdoors. The morning of this hunt was one of those kind of mornings that we dream about all season long as hunters. The front had blew through the night before. We had had gale force winds, torrential rain, there was tornado warnings everywhere that night. But once that blew through and the skies cleared, the temperatures dropped. So that morning was a cold, brisk, frosty morning. You combine that with the middle of the rut, the bucks were up on their feet, they was looking for does. It was a magical time to be in the woods. That morning, by 11 o'clock, I'd seen seven different bucks. Four of them were shooters. I'd rattled three of them in. We just had a little six pointer, maybe a small eight. I seen him up on the ridge there, and I hit on one together. And he come right to me. He was 25 yards from me. He was looking for the fight, probably looking for uh, what they were fighting over. I don't think he wanted the piece of very much. He eventually uh, cruised on out of sight. And about uh, 10 o'clock, I heard another rustling the leaves, turned around, looked behind me, come a pretty good buck. He was about 100 yards, and uh, but he was uh, walking away from me. I grunted at him. He never paid a bit of attention to it. I got my can out and done a little uh, doe bleed at him. He didn't acknowledge it. This makes the sixth. No, I'm sorry, this makes the fifth buck I've seen. i seen him coming around to that low gap there to my left, cruising, just like that last little six-pointer. I crashed the horns together, and he bristled up, and he come on a string. He was a little bit bigger than that six. He was a 10. I actually drew on him, and uh, just as I was drawing, he stepped out of frame, and I had to let down. And by the time, time I got back on him, I had no more shots. Right around 11 o'clock, I caught movement to my left. It was, he was out about 75 yards. Uh, another buck he was coming down off the point getting right across the road and thank God about that time a car was coming and when he, when he heard that car coming up the road he turned and ran back up the point just a little bit but once that car went by he was bound to determine to go across that road so I grabbed my rattling antlers and um, I rattled a little bit at him and the same response as that 10 pointer that uh, come into me as soon as he heard them horns boy he locked up bristled up Looked in my direction, and that's all it took. I turned him, boys. He come right. He come right to me on a string. Once I seen he had committed and was going to come to me, I went ahead and eased up, grabbed my Matthews, and uh, just like that, a uh, uh, ten pointer. When he got, in, he was the same shooting lane the ten pointer come to. Once he got in that lane, I grunted at him. This time he didn't take a step. But I think I hit him high. It didn't look like I got much penetration. I'm gonna have to review the footage and look at it, but he was right underneath of me. Gosh, I hope I can make a good shot. I had an awful lot of air sticking out, so. Man, it's been a good morning. It's 
why we shoot a Matthews baby right there. Now let's just hope the rage done its job. I'm gonna get my stuff together and, and get down. I'm gonna give him probably, I don't know, three or four hours, because I think I hit him high. He took out here flying. Whew, yes. I slung a rage at him, and I wasn't real happy with the, the shot I made. I knew I hit him hard. He tucked his tail and done the mule kick and took off running. I watched him out of sight. I watched him probably 100 yards, and he never did break stride. I stuck him about 11 o'clock this morning. I went to my old buddy's Lionel Green's house, and uh, we watched the footage. We kind of think it was a good shot, then we kind of think it could be a little high. You, you just never know. Uh, it didn't look like I got much penetration, but old Lionel come with me to, to help me hopefully find him. He's actually going to run the camera for me on the track, on the recovery. So uh, come on along with us. Hopefully the rage done its job. The impact was, was about 10 yards on up the hill. He whirled and come around this way. And we, we've seen this green tree right here. I marked it when we was viewing it on the Lionel's big screen. And it was a wise thing to do because I had no idea really where he come over the hill at. We come to this green, this, this tree with moss all over it, and not even five yards from the tree find blood look at the blood right here and then let's go this way you can the ground is so wet you can about follow his hoof prints look shining right there line mail that's why we use luminot boys right there my air hey I got a little more penetration than what I thought once I found that air, I felt a whole lot better about the shot. I had at least, uh, I got at least 12 to 14 inches of penetration, so I knew I got lungs. I was left and right, it was perfect. I was just a little bit worried about the height. So with that penetration, I knew, I knew he couldn't carry that rage. So uh, we, we carried on with the blood trail there, and even though the weeds were, the, or the leaves were wet, it wasn't hard to find. Guys, the, the trail, he's been following the trail pretty consistently the whole way. Right here, the trail splits. You gotta be really careful. You lose the blood trail really quick right here. We got blood. We got a little speck right here. So we know he went on this lower trail. If they're hurt pretty bad, they're usually, they're not gonna go uphill. I figured he would've tucked this lower trail. But there's another one that cuts off right down here and goes across the road. We gotta make sure that it stays on this side of the road. I was in the process of pointing out a big old rub I'd seen on a, happened to see on a big old hardwood tree. The tree was dying near big around my thigh. And I was just getting ready to point it out to Lionel, and I happened to look over to my right and seen that big white belly laying there. Oh, there he is, Lionel! <laughs> yes! Woo! He didn't go 200 yards, guys. We'll show you the rub later. Come on down here and look at my beard. Man, he's all in his first box. He's trying to hide. Needless to say, I was very relieved because I told Lionel before we left, I said, man, I got a bad feeling, Lionel. Because uh, you just never know. If you don't see those deers fall in sight, you always got that feeling in the back of your head in the back of your head. You're doubting your shot, you're second guessing your shot. But when I looked over and seen that sucker laying there, it was an awesome feeling. Here it is, November the 18th. I've seen a total of six shooters the whole season, and believe it or not, four of them was this morning. They was wide open this morning. This is actually the third buck that I rattled in. I drawed earlier on a little bit better buck. It was a 10 pointer. And just as I was drawing back, he stepped out of the frame. And I had to let off and I couldn't get him back on. I couldn't get another shot at him. But uh, I'm glad to have this one tickled to death. Like I said, it's been a long season. He wasn't going very far from with that shot. The rage done him in. I thank Lionel for coming and running the camera for me. We're gonna get him out of here and get him hung up. I'm glad to have him. And I wanna give Lionel big thanks for going and help me recover him and help me uh, get him to the truck. Thanks for watching.
This portion of 3B Outdoors brought to you by Nelson's Outfitters, Trophy Hunts in Wyoming and Montana, Sunline, Tenzing Packs and Gear, Watson's Airlock, Kistler Rods, Under Armour, Big Dog Muzzleloaders, Fray Bill, Preferred Insurance Solutions, Bass Pro Shops, and Express Signs, specializing in lighting signs, vinyl graphics, and making 3B Outdoors look good. I saw Brent going hunting again this morning. I thought he was building a new home. Haven't you heard? It's already built. McConnell and Son took care of everything, completely hassle-free. You know, Fess, Brenda and I, we've thought about building a new home, but we're afraid it'll end up in divorce. Nah, I think you guys will do great. Just let Andy McConnell handle all the worries. I've heard him say it many a times. He aims to save marriages. W. McConnell and Sons, give him a call. Hunting. Fishing. It's time we settle this. Okay, let's go to Wally's. Let's go! Nathan, Wally's has everything a hunter needs. Freddie, have you seen all the fishing tackle at Wally's? I said hunting. And I said fishing. Hey guys, you're both right. I'm Andrew, owner of Wally Sporting Goods, a haven for all sportsmen and women. From rifles to rods and reels, Wally Sporting Goods is your locally owned outdoor connection. Hunting and fishing. Hey, I'm Freddie Neely from 3B Outdoors. For the last seven years, I've shot a spot hog sight. It's the most durable, dependable, rugged sight that I've ever come in contact with. After several states and several critters later, I'm still greedy. So if you want to get greedy, go give Josh Johnson from Spot Hog a call. Tell him 3B Outdoor Boys sent you. Or better yet, go to spothog.com and order all their products.
Whew, Lord Roy. He's plumb the bottom. It's hard on a fat boy. He was all the way in the bottom. <laughs> hey boy, this is about an hour afterwards. I had to chase this bird to the bottom of the ridge down in the gully and had to chase him everywhere. Didn't think we was going to get him that. I shot him the first time with old Matthews with rage. Wasn't none of the equipment's fault. It was totally my fault. I'm pretty sure I clipped the bottom of the blind and uh, sent it a little bit low. Uh, bird wasn't, was less than 20 yards, so it's my own fault. I can't blame anybody else, but uh, then I had to pick my daughter's crossbow up. We brought his a backup. We was kind of trying to not shoot shotgun in here right now because we're trying to keep these birds in. This farm we got, that, been growed up over our heads for years and we just got the lease on it about a month ago and been cleaning it up and knew these birds was here we're seeing them everywhere around here just hadn't seen them on us yet but uh, they finally started coming back in this bird come in with them two old hens uh, he must be the boss around here because he's got some big old spurs on him my buddy Aaron behind the camera just didn't get any better I was blessed today after going for the whole season and not killing anything, this one made it all worth it. I'm Freddie Neely, and that's exactly why I shoot a Matthew, even though I didn't hit it good. I'm Freddie Neely and you're watching 3B Outdoors where Bucky just absolutely choked on a 20 yard shot with a Matthew. Hey folks, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back right after the break. This segment of 3B Outdoors presented by Matthews, Catch Us If You Can, Clayno, Rage Broadheads, Motormate USA, K9 Sunglasses, Hunter Safety Systems, Lawrence HDS Gen 2 Touch, Hardcore, Waterfowl Decoys and Gear, Luminoc, and Paul Clark State Farm Insurance, 3B Outdoors Preferred Insurance Provider. Hi, I'm Eddie McConnell, owner of W.E. McConnell & Son. We are a franchise builder of nationwide homes. We have over 35 years of experience building over a hundred house plans to choose from, or we can customize your home plan to make your dream come true. We're not only better at building homes, we're better at building homes better. Did you build my house? I built your house. You built the best house ever. It said does. At Ravy Ford, we're having the big deal sale. This is a big deal. Every new 2013 Ford and Lincoln will have the factory invoice posted in the window. Now that is a big deal. And we have 0% financing and no payments for 90 days on most vehicles. Do I need to say it again? Hmm, yes, that is a big deal. At Ramey Ford, we do the deal. Now that's a big deal. ATC Cooling and Heating, your factory authorized carrier dealer. Turn to the experts specializing in geothermal heat pump systems. Take advantage of a 30% tax credit for geothermal installation and rebates up to $17.50. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call the folks at ATC Cooling and Heating. When all other brands fall, carrier and ATC stand tall. Your geothermal heat pump specialist. There they are. Spooked him. Was that a bird ground? No, it was my stomach. I'm hungry. Well, this turkey hunting is way overrated. Let's go down Kearney's and get us some of that roasted chicken they talk about. You know what Mike says? Seven days without chicken makes one week. Let's go. Hey, let's go. I'm all for that. You want a good home cooked meal? Come to Lynn Garden Restaurant in Kingsport. You won't be disappointed. And here's proof. of you and 
that's the way it is. We've got fairly thick stuff right here. There's uh, some oaks in here, so there's acres for them to eat. And, and the thick stuff makes the deer feel comfortable when they come through. BBD, baby. Big dough down. I mean, you can't. Devil. She's down, ain't she? Right there. I mean, if you're going to find one right there, stand with it. I never shot this bow before. Fess, but it looks like it'll work. Fess, he was a shooter to start with. He just drilled one, hit right up our fell over. We changed places and I got here in his spot. Another big doe turned around, another doe come down through here. And I just put her on the ground right down there. So we tagged out for the day. We've got those down. You got to do some doe management in your herd if you're gonna if you're gonna do this. It also gets you some practice in, so when you go to Ohio and a big butt comes through there, it don't look like it's the first one you ever seen. 
Yeah, boy, that's a good doe. Guys, this is the end results of a, a good, well-placed arrow and uh, well planned out, uh, planned to come in here and harvest us a uh, doe or buck, whatever might come through. We were just really ready. And uh, anyway, you guys got to see what happened. We're going to get this big doe out of here. We made a great shot on her. And uh, we're going to get down here and uh, find my brothers right now. We know exactly where it's at too, because you guys saw it hit the ground. The wind was swirling around, and does come through, and they busted us early. And we was beginning to think, uh, well, that's it. But as fate would have it, I can't remember right now, Fess saw them coming up the fence row, and the wind was perfect. They walked right into an ambush. He laid one out. We swapped places 30 minutes later another one come down through there and uh, here she lays so we took care of business this morning we got to get them dressed out it's getting warm get these back straps in the chiller somewhere and this evening we may go squirrel hunting well congratulations to richie mason on yet another ohio giant then what about bucky you know he had to do some sweet talking to get that old long beard into bow range then what can i say about the mcdavid brothers you know, it's not always about the size of the horns. It's about family, friends, and just having a great time. I'm Freddie Neely, and thanks again for watching 3B Outdoors. We wake up in the morning before the rising sun. Load up boats, rides and reels, bows and our guns. We're Team 3B.